Hello and welcome back to another dungeon boss guide video for the level 83 dungeon, this time the Tower of Babel. This dungeon has three fairly enjoyable bosses to work our way through, and the first one is Barnabas. Basically, you need to tank this boss away from the group, facing away. He does actually have uh, a cleave mechanic with his tank buster, and that's called Ground and Pound. This is where the creature readies its fist, uh, ready to smash your tank, and this is a line AoE in front of the boss, so don't stand in front of the boss. Dynamic Scrape Line or Scrap Line is a plus and minus mechanic that you might remember from bosses such as Living Liquid in Alexander. The center of the room will have an AoE with a plus or a minus written on it. Your character also gets a plus or a minus or debuff above their head, so you move accordingly. If you have equal symbols to the boss, then you will push outwards so stand inwards to avoid being hurt by the outside wall when you're pushed if you have the opposite then it will pull you inwards so you stand on the outside of a room to avoid being pulled into the center aoe simple as that shocking force is a stack marker so stack on that player dynamic pound is where the boss goes outside the arena still attackable by the way which is good and gives you a minus or a plus symbol again on your character this time there will be a line aoe down the center of the room this line will have a plus or a minus written on it stand close if you have the identical signs and far away if you have the opposite once again to avoid you from being by uh, hit by the outer wall or indeed the aoe line when that goes off in the center Thundercall is cast from the boss to spawn electric balls around the room. Uh, this actually places an AoE around the middle of the room as well, where the boss is. Simply stand between the balls in the corners to avoid the, avoid the large circle AoEs that will spawn from the balls. And that's basically the entire fight. That's just on repeat. Easy peasy. Very simple first boss. So boss 2 then is Luge. This is a uh, Magitek infused boss. First of all, you will see that he launches Magitek missiles which spawn lots of AoE circles on the floor to avoid in the room. Then is Magitek Ray that targets a player at random and puts a line AoE for you all to avoid on the floor. Very basic stuff. And then you'll see it go to the center of the room and cast an ability called Downpour. This will actually open up two platforms that you can walk over that give you a buff. One has a frog symbol and the other has this sort of miniaturization diagram showing somebody getting smaller. For Downpour, the room will fill with water, making it practically impossible for your character to breathe, taking damage over time. You will die if you don't turn into a frog then by standing on the green frog platform. All the while, you must also keep moving as a frog to avoid more Magitek missile circles across the actual room that the boss keeps pumping out. Thermal Suppression is a large AoE that's unavoidable and you have to heal through this. That will also happen throughout the fight. Magitek Explosive is where bombs will appear in a room. To avoid damage here, then, you simply imagine that each bomb has a cross-shaped explosion from it, like the video game Bomberman. Stand where there would be no line AoEs from each of the 90 degree angles from each bomb and you will be fine nice and simple it's very 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 easy next we see another ability for the platforms to be used this time he will cast magitech chakram to avoid losing your head very literally from these blades that whiz across the room you use the platform of the miniaturization or the other color to make yourself miniaturized this is uh, usually set by two sets of the chakrams so you have plenty of time as long as you walk over that and get the buff Sometimes it's better to be early so you can be out of that buff as soon as the chakrams fade. They last quite a while. And that's pretty much the entire boss, just repeated until it dies or you die. Next then is boss 3. This is Anima which I still think should have been a trial fight, just saying, putting that out there. Anima starts this fight then with Lunar Nail. This puts purple sticks in the arena around. Uh, they are in an order to make square shapes, that's why they're placed there. There is, however, a safe zone where there isn't four of these nails in a square formation. 
thus making their area safe. Simply find the area without a connecting outside line then and stand there. Mega Graviton is an unavoidable AoE that you have to heal or shield your way through. And then there's also a line AoE to avoid. Afterwards, four black holes will appear in the room. You actually get tethered to one of these. Every player gets tethered. To prevent yourself from taking damage from the black hole, run to the opposite diagonal black hole to the one that you're tethered to. That way, when it goes off and pulls you towards the hole, you actually won't be in danger of the, of the black hole because you won't be sucked into it. Boundless Pain is where lines attach from Anima to the sides of a room and he starts to absorb ether. Stack up for this in the center of a room and then move to the corners facing the boss. This is basically um, pulsing damage where you last stood. You just move from it when you have baited it into the center of a room. Kind of like an Akmorn that stays in one place or an Akrai. Imperatum marks the transition phase chaining your party up, making you unable to attack, and teleporting you into Anima's dimension. This exposes the lower half of the boss to fight. This is a separate health bar. On the screen, you'll see a chaos meter uh, that will fill over time. So this is a bit of a DPS check, but it really isn't that much of a problem. It really is quite simple. Obliviating Claw then is cast throughout this that puts markers on the side of a room. These then turn into claws, and then they also spawn on the opposite side. This will create line AoEs of claws that move across the room to avoid. Uh, just simply remember which side spawned first and stand between where the lines would go to be safe. Then straight afterwards you move to where the claws just went off and that way you end up avoiding both sets of claw lines. Very, very simple. Also whilst trying to do decent DPS to the boss here. Also now we have the Obliviating Claw set uh, cast again, but this time it's on two marked players. Simply bait these as those players away from everyone else, and then keep moving around the room. Do not stop, otherwise the claw will catch you until it fades and stops exploding. The claws on the side of the room will probably be cast again if your DPS is low like it is in this trust run here. Basically, it's just a case of killing Anima's lower half before this meter fills up, but if the meter did fill, then it's a guaranteed wipe. Once this part of Anima is defeated then, nice and simple, the boss does a powerful AoE from the accumulated uh, chaos. So you just heal this away or just some basic shields seem to take off most of the damage. And then the fight teleports you back above into the normal world again, continuing your fight against the Anima that you've just been fought, uh, fighting against previously. With the same HP that you've taken it down to. Boundless Pain is repeated, so you just bait it in a group with the middle and then run to the corners, avoid your line AoEs that can be cast on a player here too, and it's on basic repeat of everything you have now, including Lunar Nails again, where we stand where there isn't a completed square, or a square can't be completed, and so on. The fight is very simple, and it even has a chance to drop the Anima minion, which is awesome. It's one of my favorite dungeons from this entire expansion thus far, and uh, yeah, I, I have an absolute thrill of a time running this repeatedly. A wonderful dungeon. It is, however, a shame that Anima, I think, is, uh, in my opinion, not made into a trial. But never mind. It's great fun regardless, and I look forward to whatever future endeavors we might encounter. Much love. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was helpful, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.